So if you have any technical difficulties or you have to leave at any time, uh, no worries. You can view this at another time. And then if you have any questions and want to follow up with me, my email is right there, thomas at localfirstaz.com. Happy to chat with you afterwards and answer any additional questions that you have. Um, if you do have any technical difficulties that you want to try to get fixed right away, you can call our office at 602-956-0909. Um, we're going to hold all questions until the end. So even though you do, you're, you should have the ability to type a message on the side, you can just hold those questions until the end of the presentation and we'll leave some, some time for that. I'm going to give the presentation for just about 30 minutes. I'm not going to waste any of your time. I'm going to give you some very valuable information about your membership. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. So I'm going to give you an overview of how Local First Arizona got started, uh, what we have done um, to promote local businesses here in Arizona, and what we're doing now to continue to do that. And then that's So that's going to be the first half of the presentation. The second half, I'm going to go over in detail your membership benefits so that you fully understand what being a member of Local First Arizona is all about and how you can fully utilize your membership benefits um, with our organization. So we'll go ahead and get started just very quickly just to kind of show you who I am and who you're listening to. Uh, that's me in the top left corner with my fiance and that is the fourth uh, rescue animal that we have adopted. That was about two months ago. Her name's Sadie. Bottom, bottom left corner you will see my fiance Corey about five seconds after I asked her to marry me back in December. If you look at the top right corner, um, those of you that are on in the that live in the Phoenix area, you may or may not have seen that billboard around uh, the Phoenix metro area. Um, I actually took that photo last year, and the Phoenix Zoo used it in their advertising campaign. And then in the bottom right hand corner, you will see one of three beautiful elephants that my fiance takes care of at the Phoenix Zoo. So that's just a quick snapshot on me, just so you know who you're listening to. But less about me and more about Local First Arizona. Local First Arizona was actually started by our founder and executive director, Kimber Lanning. Many of you have probably heard the name, if not met her before. She's actually a local business owner herself. She's owned a record store um, that is on Central and Camelback called Stinkweeds. She opened it up back in 1987. And this year she is celebrating the 27th year of Stinkweeds um, being around. It is one of only four record stores that exists in the Phoenix metro area today. Uh, in addition to owning Stinkweed, she also opened up the Modified Arts uh, Art Gallery on Roosevelt Row back in 19, uh, I think, 97. And um, I don't know how many of you are uh, familiar with Roosevelt Row today, but if you come to Roosevelt Row in um, downtown Phoenix today, you'll see lots of coffee shops and art galleries and retail shops and restaurants. But back in the late 90s, when Kimber opened up the Modified Arts, the only two other uh, businesses that were on the street was a hubcap shop and a liquor store. So as you can imagine, since she opened up the Modified Arts, a lot, a lot has changed in this community and in this neighborhood, and it didn't happen by accident. All the business, after Kimber opened the Modified, uh, businesses started sprouting up next to her, another art, art gallery, then another coffee shop. And those businesses supported each other and grew with each other, and they brought people in to that community and, and that community just started to flourish because of the support that that community gave to each other through the businesses that were there. Today, you come to Roosevelt Row, you get off on the light rail on Central and Portland, you'll see a sign that says Arts District. They decreased crime in this uh, community by 62% since the late 90s. And they've developed a sense of community that people flock to. Now, I'm not telling you that story about Kimber to tell you how great she is. I'm telling you that story because that's the power of what small business can do. When small businesses work together uh, to grow and um, unify in, in our economy, and they they can, uh, small businesses have the power to, you know, transform our economy. They're not just these cute little shops that we um, look at and put our money into every once in a while. They they are a very strong part and a huge backbone to our economy, and that's what Local First Arizona is all about. So, in addition to owning these two things, Kimber also is the founder and executive director of Local First Arizona. She founded Local First Arizona in 2003. And she started Local First Arizona for two major reasons. The first major reason was she was working in stinkweeds and she had the modified arts. And people were coming in and out that she knew growing up that had uh, lived in Arizona and were leaving Arizona to go other places. And it was making her really upset and mad because why were all these bright young people that had gained all of their skills here in Arizona leaving Arizona to go to other places when there's so much opportunity and so many things that are already here? And she figured out it's because those bright young people that were leaving 
did not feel connected to Arizona. So the first reason that Local First Arizona was started to, uh, to get people connected to Arizona so that we would stop losing the bright young people that were growing up here. Now to give you an example of what uh, Kimber did to figure that out, is she found one place that everybody talks about <clears throat> that she knew that people were proud of being from. And that place is Chicago. I'm sure everybody listening here knows somebody that's from Chicago. Now, if you know that person from Chicago, I can guarantee they probably never stop talking about Chicago. Chicago this, Chicago that. So Kimber started asking those people that were from there, why do you feel so connected to there? And in a million ways, in a million voices, they told her it's because of the locally owned businesses that are in Chicago. It may have been that they've gone to the same restaurant since they were a child and they know the, uh, the owner of the restaurant. They've gone to the same barber for 20 years. It may have even been that they bank at the same bank that their grandfather used to bank at. But one way or the other, people are connected to Chicago because they're connected through the local businesses that are there. So why don't we have the same connection here? Why don't people feel the same connection to Arizona that people feel to a place like Chicago? Why do we have a lower than average voter turnout? Why do we have lower than average volunteers? And why can't we put butts in seats at Diamondback schemes? The Cubs haven't won a World Series in 100 years, but the Diamondbacks won one 14 years ago, and we had 18,000 people at the game last week. So part of what Local First Arizona is all about is getting people excited about the place that they live, which is Arizona, through the local businesses that are here. So that's the first major reason um, Kimber started Local First and why and, and the types of things that we're doing. The second reason she started Local First was to level the playing field for all businesses that are operating in Arizona. Now, as local business owners, um, who are listening here, uh, I'm sure you realize there's lots of rules and regulations that you have to adhere to. And there's tons of things like tax subsidies that national companies will receive um, for coming to Arizona. And those types of things aren't really given to local businesses that are already headquartered here. So to give you an example of a major thing that happened to the city of Glendale was um, something that happened with Cabela's. I'm sure everyone has heard of this business before. A lot of people think that Cabela's is in the industry of hunting and fishing or outdoor gear, and that's actually incorrect. Cabela's is in the industry of tax subsidies. Each Cabela's that opens averages a tax subsidy of $35 million. The, the Cabela's that opened up in Glendale after the Cardinal Stadium went up received a tax subsidy of $68 million. That included free land and free infrastructure, and also they don't have to pay sales tax for 10 years. That means you can go into their store and purchase something, pay your sales tax, and they get to keep the sales tax. That's not economic development, and that's not what, what is going to grow our economy. Uh, this, this model right here of attracting a business to come here really sucked Glendale dry, and they were very close to actually closing one of their libraries because of how economically drastic this was for that area. So Kimber thought, you know, these types of things shouldn't be happening. We need to um, not be giving and not be paying for these large companies to come here. And all businesses need to be operating on the same level. <clears throat> so those are the two major reasons that Local First started. And um, when we're out talking to people, instead of explaining these two major ideas, <clears throat> we have one simple fact that we can tell people that resonates very clearly. And that's that um, for every $100 that you spend, if you spend that $100 in a local business, $45 will stay and recirculate right here in Arizona. For that same $100 you spend at any national chain, only about $13 rem remains here in Arizona. And just thinking about that, about four times more of your money will stay here in Arizona when you spend it at local businesses is very, very easy to understand. It's a fact. And this is why supporting local businesses is so important. Now I'm going to explain what I mean by that money recirculating in our economy. If you could take a second really quickly, um, we're going to compare 15 Starbucks locations with 15 local coffee shops. Um, let's look really quickly what is similar between these two types of businesses. The 15 Starbucks and the 15 local coffee shops both pay their taxes. That's absolutely correct. They also both create jobs. We're not going to lie and say that Starbucks doesn't create jobs because they do. Starbucks even gives benefits to their employees, something that not most national companies do. But let's think about all the local printing shops here in Arizona that Starbucks employs. There aren't any of them. Let's think about all the law firms here, none. Accounting firms, none. Web developers, graphic designers, payroll service providers, on and on and on. Now let's think about the jobs that the uh, local coffee shops 
support by being here. There, there's going to be 15 accountants and 15 payroll service providers and 15 web developers. These are called secondary jobs and they make the world go round. They're, you are never going to hear about them in the newspaper, but they are only produced through the local businesses that are here. We can even take a step back and look at the entire country and think about 30,000 Starbucks locations with only one uh, web developer, with only one graphic designer, with only one law firm, and with only one accounting firm. And then we think about the 30,000 accounting firms and 30,000 web developers that are produced through the local businesses. Now, when we talk about this model right here of supporting local businesses compared to the national business, there's always one person that usually says, you know what, that's just economies of scale. Starbucks can do that because they offer lower prices. But that's actually incorrect because you cannot get a cheaper latte at Starbucks than you can at the local coffee shops. So you would be spending the same money at the local coffee shop and supporting more jobs, keeping more money in your community by supporting that local business. So this is all that we talk about when we're out, you know, talking to business owners and talking to consumers and, you know, getting our legislature uh, to realize what's going on in our economy here in Arizona. And now I'm going to show you where Local First Arizona is today. We are 2,500 locally owned businesses strong, and we are the largest coalition of locally owned businesses in North America. Uh, we have an online directory that's searched more than 42,000 times a month. Those aren't hits to our website. Those are searches in our directory. That means people are going into our directory typing something into the key box and looking for local businesses to spend their money at. We have an active buy local campaign, getting people to shift their spending to local business from national businesses. And we operate as both a 501c6 and a 501c3 nonprofit. Our C6 is focused on business development, getting business owners that are local to do business with each other to help those uh, businesses and communities thrive. Our C3 C3 is focused on rural development, working with the outer communities of Arizona in the in the rural areas to help develop those communities, because those are also very, very important to our economy here in Arizona. We are an advocacy group that is focused on long-term economic development and economic sustainability. A lot of people hear the word sustainability and they think green or eco-friendly. That's actually not what we're talking about. We're talking about that we're not looking for short-term answers or short-term solutions. We're looking for what is going to sustain our economy in the long run and be best for our communities here in Arizona. We are focused also on business-to-business -business interaction and growing deep wealth in the region. Uh, we talk to our leaders and our economic development teams and get them to realize that we need to put more of our money and our spending into the retention and the expansion of businesses that are already here rather than attracting larger companies like the Cabela's example I gave you to come here. If we put more money into the businesses that are here, our economy will, economy will grow from within and we will establish deep wealth in our communities here. And then we also have a very, very strong consumer base of over 56,000 social media followers. These are people on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter following us every day, looking to see what we're uh, saying and what we're doing. We're getting them excited about the local movement and we're feeding them into our business directory. So. That's a lot about Local First Arizona. A lot of people, when they hear about us, <clears throat> they think, oh, you guys are just retail shops. You guys are just um, food and dining. That's actually incorrect. Our largest category of businesses is business services. This is everything from your payroll service providers to your printing companies to your search engine optimization companies. There are so many of these companies here that a lot of people don't realize they're even here, and we help promote those greatly. After that, we have food and dining and then shopping and retail. And we have tons and tons of businesses in different categories. I'm not sure if you guys can see the screen very well, but we have local automotive shops, local education, uh, fitness and wellness, home and garden, health and medicine, anything that's out there that exists as a business, there's a local business for it. And that's part of what we do at Local First is making people aware of that. So moving on, we're going to shift gears. I've given you tons of information about what Local First Arizona, um, how we became what we are and what we're doing today. Now I'm going to go into straight detail about your membership benefits as a member of Local First Arizona with your business and what you need to do to fully optimize those benefits to get the most out of your membership. So like I said before, our, web, our website directory listing is getting about 42,000 searches a month. A lot of businesses, like I said, are business services and aren't just looking for people off the street to come to them. Uh, one thing to understand is our directory is not just being searched by consumers looking for restaurants. 
They are also be, it, it is also being searched by business owners that are members of our organization or larger companies that are looking to use local businesses. So it's a great place to be. Um, having a complete profile uh, in, in our directory, completing your profile and doing all those things, which I'll show you in a second, is going to increase your search engine optimization in uh, search engines like Google. So if you have fully completed keywords, things like that, um, you're going to be in our directory, yes, that directory listing is also going to help you be found on search engines as well. So just to show you really quickly, um, I know it's really hard to see, but I'm showing you on up top a uh, fake, um, well not a fake, it's a, a mock website directory listing for Local First Arizona. It's not really on there. Um, but there I don't have a logo listed and I don't have a description for my business. Now we'll look right underneath that at Copper Point Mutual and look at how much better the, uh, direct, the directory listing looks like for Copper Point Mutual. They have a description. I know you can't read it, but and then you can also see their logo. Uh, these are the types of things that you need to do to your, to your directory listing to make sure that um, you look visually well on our website and that you can be more easily found. Now this is just a glimpse of what you look, what your uh, directory listing will look like in a search. Um, it's too hard for me to show you what your actual page would look, would look like. You can log in and look at that. But I wanted to show you really quickly, if somebody's scrolling down and you don't have your logo or description, people are going to be less likely to click on your name. So just really quickly to go over some things that you need to make sure that you have filled out on your directory listing, you need to make sure all your contact information is correct. Your website, if you have a physical address, is that correct? Your phone number? And then from there, you need to make sure that everything on your listing is how you want it to, to appear. So you have a tagline on your listing, and then you have a description on your listing where you can list multiple locations if you have them. You can say anything about your company that you want to promote. After that, you have keywords, which are very, very important. You can have, I believe, I don't think there's a limit on your keywords, or if there is, nobody has ever hit it. But you can add as many keywords as you want. So if I'm a bike shop, I'm going to add bikes bicycle, bicycle, tricycles, Schwinn, everything that you can think of that somebody might type in into our directory to find your business. In addition to that, you can add a local first Arizona special, which I have uh, listed there in the bottom right hand corner. You do not have to do this, but it's a, an extra way to find out if people are finding you on our directory and then going to your business. So if you offer a special code like local first Arizona 2014 and you say call our, our business to get 5% off, um, then you know that you're getting some more traffic just by people calling you and giving you that code. That's a way to, to help you track that information. The two other things that we actually have to do on our end right now that you cannot update on your end is adding your logo and adding categories. If you have not already sent me your logo, you need to send it to me at thomas at localfirstaz.com, and I'll have that at the end of the presentation as well so that you can write that down. And then if you, looking, if you are looking at your directory listing and you see there's categories that don't necessarily fit your business or you want some categories that are added that aren't there, just email me a list of those and I can add them on my end as well. Very, very soon we are revamping this section of the website and you will be able to do all of this yourself. But for right now, you'll need to email me your logo and any categories you want changed if you want that to happen. So um, I'll take questions about this at the end if you have any, but we're going to move on to the second benefit you're getting out of being a part of Local First Arizona, and that is getting a monthly educational and networking opportunities. We have educa educational opportunities every month. We have a seminar in Phoenix and Tucson, and then a webinar every other month. So if you're in a rural community or northern Arizona or anything like that, we don't have in-person seminars yet, but we do hold online webinars every other month. They're very similar to this kind of setup, but you pay a low fee of $8 if you purchase it in advance, and it's only open to local First Arizona members. So this is where we get local professionals that are members of our organization to highlight different topics and educate our businesses on different things like internet marketing and special events if you've never held one, even leveraging your localness as a business, um, figuring out what you need to do to shift some of your spending as a business from national to local companies, and these are really great opportunities. The second um, part of this is your networking opportunities. We have evening mixers in Phoenix metro area, the Tucson metro area, northern Arizona, and for our Spanish-speaking initiative, Fuerza Local, each month. Our Phoenix metro area sees about 50 to 60 businesses each time, um, and the other areas are a little different. It just kind of depends on where it is. 
So these are great opportunities at no cost to you that you definitely need to take advantage of. Uh, in the Phoenix area, if you're in the Phoenix area, we also have a lunch mixer each month, which some of you may have already taken advantage of the one yesterday in Gilbert. Um, but uh, as you may have experienced, all you have to do is just pay for your meal, and we usually see about 20 to 30 businesses there. Um, this may be something that we introduce into the other areas. Right now, we're not ready to do so, but you can definitely take advantage of the evening mixers. These are great, great ways to get your business out there, meet other local business owners, and as we're establishing the level playing field for local businesses here, you're only interacting with other businesses that you know are facing the same challenges and are also local and headquartered here in Arizona. So moving on from there, the third benefit that you're getting uh, from your membership is exposure. And what I mean by exposure is we offer you uh, online exposure through our social media. We run two live online campaigns each year and we give you physical exposure through our tabling each year. And I'm gonna go through each one really quickly. Our social media, like I mentioned before, has about 56,000 followers. And this image that you're looking at right here is just a glimpse of our 2013 annual report. And you can see really quickly, if you're looking at everything, the breakdown of uh, the followers that we have on each um, type of social media. Um, I can already tell you right now that Facebook has already jumped to over 17,000. So as you can imagine, our, popu our popularity and our attention is continually growing. So just being a part of our organization, you need to interact with us on these types of social media accounts. Even if you think your business you know, doesn't need social media or anything like that, the more people see your business name and interacting with us, liking our things, sharing our things, you're just getting your name out there and you're, and you're, getting, you're letting people know that you support local and that you are a local business. It's a great, it's a great way for you to easily uh, leverage your membership there. Um, in addition to all these social media accounts, we also have newsletters that reach about 25,000 people each week. Um, we have about 10 different newsletters that we send uh, for different regions. You should already be receiving them. If you are not receiving them, please email me after this and let me know and we'll get you signed up. Uh, our newsletters highlight lots of local things that are going on. And um, a lot of people think that the newsletter is the best place to be seen for your business. That's actually not true. As you can see, Twitter has about 20,000 followers. That's probably more right now. And if you have any press releases, if you have any special events, if you're doing anything that's super local and all about our mission, say you just shifted your office supplies from a national company to local company, send that information to us. And I don't know if you can see it. I'll have this email at the end as well. But you can send it to editor at localfirstaz.com. Anytime you want to send us information, just send us there, and we will help you promote it, whether it's an event, like I said, or a press release, whatever you have going on. We want people to see your business, and we want people you know, to be reading about what's going on in the local movement. And then the last thing with our social media is we have a blog that's read about 9,000 times each month where we highlight different things going on with our organization. Um, it's, a, it's a great place to check out what's going on with us, and um, we feed more people into our directory that way as well. So the second way that we promote you or and give you some more exposure is through online campaigns. The next online campaign that's coming up is coming up very soon, and, and I highly, highly encourage everyone listening here to take advantage of it because there's no cost to do it, and it's part of your membership. It is called Independence Week, and it, it runs from June 29th through July 6th. This is where we get as many members that would like to participate to give something for 20% off. It does not have to be everything that you sell or, you, uh, or, or that you do as a service. It just has to be something for 20% off, and you can create the restrictions for that. This is a great way to increase your exposure during a week and a month that is usually a little slower in Arizona for business. All you need to, to do is at the there will be a link at the end of this, uh, this session that will show you where you need to go. It's just localfirstaz.com slash independence week. Uh, you can even find it from our main page. You click a button um, to add your business listing, and then we'll put it on our website. We're going to add those in about 10 days. Um, this is really, really great. It's been recognized by the Governor's Office of Arizona as a week to celebrate local businesses, and also several cities have recognized it. Uh, so we have tons of media attention this week, and it's a great way for your business to just get some more attention as well. The second uh, online campaign that I'll touch on really quickly because it's about six months away is Buy Local Month, and it runs from Black Friday through uh, Christmas Eve. And this is where we comprise all of our business members' uh, holiday events and holiday specials on a special page on our website to get people to shift their spending from national companies to local companies um, during the month of all the holiday shopping during the year. Now, you may think, you know, oh, I'm a service, or maybe I don't 
have something that people would like to buy during the holidays. We have several auto shops that offer specials during Buy Local Month. Uh, that I mean, who's thinking about doing anything with their automotive um, cars and anything like that during Buy Local Month? Anything that you are, you can give it to us, and we'll help you promote it during that time. This is also at no cost to you. So I just want to touch on those really quickly. Like I said, everybody here needs to sign up for Independence Week. Um, the third type of exposure that we give you is in-person exposure. And this is where our staff and volunteers table about 100 events every year, more than 100 events every year. We're out there engaging the public and interacting with the public, getting them excited about shopping local, feeding them into our directory, getting them to think about shifting some of their spending from national companies to local companies. And we do this out at art festivals and business expos and uh, farmers markets all the time. So this is another great way that we feed people in our directory and another important reason why your directory listing needs to be up to date. Uh, the other uh, event that we actually put on ourselves is called the Certified Local Fall Festival, and that is in November. Um, this year will be our 10th anniversary of that festival, and we see about 10,000 people come out. It's a free festival. and um, basically, even if you're not a part of this festival, it's really great for exposing you because we get people to realize what our organization is and what we're doing. And we have tons and tons of traffic that leads to our website before and after that festival. If you're not even a part of that uh, festival as a vendor, you can come to the festival and experience it with us as well. Lots of people do that. So the way that you can view these things is if you go to the Vendor Opportunities page on our blog, uh, you can view all the year-round events. Maybe you're a business that's looking to get into events. Uh, there's tons of different things. There's art festivals and business expos and different things like that. And we have all the contact information on there. So you have the direct real listing on our website we're giving you. You have monthly educational and networking opportunities. And then you have the increased exposure we can give you as being a business member of our organization. The fourth and the very most important uh, benefit that you're receiving in being a part of Local First Arizona is that you have now joined a movement. You have now joined the largest coalition of locally owned businesses in North America. You need to raise that Local First Arizona message very proudly. Uh, we will be sending you, if we haven't already, a logo in the mail that you can put on your window or your cars or anything like that that says proud member of Local First Arizona. You can print on your receipts Thank you for supporting a local business. Thank you for supporting a local first Arizona business. Um, you can take our logo from our website and put it on your website. That can in increase your traffic and your search engine optimization as well. But the more people that see that you are a locally owned business and that you are raising that flag and very proud of that, you're going to see a lot of a lot of people respecting that and um, just noticing it more because like local first has lots of media attention on us and lots of attention from different outlets. Uh, being a part of that movement is so strong. You are not just writing a check to our organization, sitting back and saying, okay, what am I going to get out of this? You are joining something that is so much bigger than that. So that is pretty much it. I'm just now going to highlight some upcoming events that you all should take note of, um, depending on what areas you're in. Like I mentioned before, Independence Week is coming up soon. The link is right there. Uh, submit your offers at localfirstaz.com slash independence dash week. You can also just find it by going to localfirstaz.com, click on, clicking on Independence Week. It's right there on the main page. Our next Phoenix Evening Mixer is June 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. We will also have an in-person new member orientation at 5.30 there. So if you have any other employees that did not get to attend this webinar, or maybe you just want to see us in person, you can come to that new member orientation. We have them before every mixer in the Phoenix area. It's basically the same thing I just did here. It's just in person. But that is going to be at the Mosaic Arts Center in Avondale. Uh, the next statewide webinar is Community Collaboration, and that's on June 24th from 10 to 1130 AM. This is definitely a must see. Uh, our director, Kimber Lanning, will be there. John Sedwick, the director of Fourth Avenue Merchants Association. And then as well, Casey Rooney from the Economic Development. And he's the director of economic development at the city of Cotton Cottonwood. Um, these are just three great leaders that are going to touch on what communities need to do to collaborate and grow together. And this is, this is going to be a really, really good one. So I really encourage everybody to check that out. Um, and then the next Northern Arizona Mixer is July 1st from 6 to 8 p.m. at Caduce Cellars in Jerome. I have not posted the next Tucson Mixer on here because I don't believe that the registration is opened yet, but it is probably going to be during that first week in July. Uh, you can view all of this information at that bottom link there. If you can see it, localfirstaz.com slash news slash events. You can also just go to our main page of our website and click on news and events. So 
we are going to move on from here and just open it up for questions. Before I do open it up for questions, um, I just want to make note of this contact information. If you're in the Phoenix area uh, and you have membership questions, you can contact me, Thomas, at localfirstaz.com. Tucson, you will contact Erica, and Northern Arizona, you will contact Meg. If you haven't met Erica or Meg yet, they are great, great um, assets to our organization, and they lead very well in those areas. Uh, the last thing I forgot to touch on was that if you are traveling or you have multiple locations or you're looking to expand your business to different areas, you are more than welcome to go to the mixers in Tucson and Northern Arizona. That is something that we don't restrict anyone to. If you have any general inquiries for our organization, you can just email info at localfirstaz.com. We'll get back to you uh, very quickly. And then our press releases uh, can be sent to editor at localfirstaz.com. So I have a question from Kim saying, can members host webinars? Yes, they can. Um, our webinars are scheduled very, very far in advance. So all of 2014 is already booked. Um, but what we do is we get requests from our members to highlight different topics or to cover different topics. And then we try to find a member that has requested to host one. Um, and, and we try and match that up as best we can. So we probably won't start looking into 2015 for a while, but if you're very, very interested, you can just send us an email to the info at localfirstaz.com inbox, and we will get back to you um, about you know how we could work that out. I have a question from Tiffany asking, where will the fall festival be held? It is held every year um, at, on Portland Parkway in downtown Phoenix, um, but that is pending right now. We're not exactly sure if that's gonna be the exact location. It might be another location that's close by, um, and we don't have the exact date yet. It will either be the first or the second Saturday of November. Um, but we will be announcing all that in the newsletters. That, that's another thing that um, everybody needs to look at is all of our information is always announced in the newsletters. Vendor opportunities, our mixers, our luncheons, our webinars. So make sure you're getting those newsletters. Uh, Tiffany's also asking, do you have plans to host in Tucson as well? Um, what do you mean by host? Have fall festival there okay um no we do not have plans for that yet um it the fall festival is a lot of work um local first arizona is a staff of about 11. so everyone here works very 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 hard throughout the year to make everything happen and as we expand to tucson and northern arizona um it's a growth uh, it's a growth opportunity for us so um the but i will tell you the one thing that we do have in tucson is we have a Saber Festival, that's a that's a food festival there that we take part in. Um, if you want to email me afterwards, Tiffany, I can send you some information about that. So does anybody else, you're welcome, does anybody else have any questions? All right, I think that that's going to be it. Um, thank you guys all for attending. Send me an email if you have any other questions. We're happy to help you here and um, hope to see you at a mixer soon. So thank you guys very much for attending today and have a great day. All right, Mark, I just got your question. How do I handle a referral from an LFA member that has gone bad? Why don't you just send me an email and we can talk about it. All right, everyone, we are going to close the session, so thank you.